everyone, and welcome to the uh, Police Commission, uh, October Recording 11th. In progress. Good evening, everyone. We're in progress right now. Wednesday, October 11th, in-person regular meeting at uh, 7.05. We are calling this a meeting uh, to order. We will do a roll call. Antonetti. Jamie Lambo. David Gennetti. Thank you. The first thing on the agenda, we are going to waive the order of the agenda. Can we please have a motion to amend the agenda by moving item 6A, the award presentation from the Police Commission Association of Connecticut, Inc., honoring Watertown Police Department Officer Joseph Diadamo. To, to be taken immediately after the roll call. Do we have a motion to uh, waive the order of the, the agenda? I'd like to make a motion to move item 6A on the agenda to right after roll call item number two on the agenda. I second the motion. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, abstention, motion is carried. Mr. Chairman. Yes. We have to make uh, Mr. Bernoff permanent. Yes, we'll make uh, that for, uh, let's see, Robert uh, is not here. Richard Rossi. Rossi. I would like to appoint uh, Carmine Verno, Commissioner uh, Verno, to uh, the vacant spot as far as the vacancy by uh, Richard Rossi. So now we have a quorum. Three members would have been a quorum. We have four members uh, present. Okay, good. And I see uh, a Representative Paletta in the back there. Good to see you tonight. We will move forward. Would you, Do you want me to read that? Read that? Yeah. Okay. On March 1st, 2023, at approximately 7.19 a.m., Officer Dodona responded to a motor vehicle versus school bus accident with injuries. Upon arrival, Officer Dodona observed a Kia Forte pinned under the rear of the school bus. The Kia was on fire. Officer Dodona reacted quickly, deploying his fire extinguisher and diffusing the flames. Officer Dodona then removed the partially trapped driver and passenger with the help of a passerby. The heroic actions of Officer Dodona helped prevent further injuries to the occupants of the vehicle and the students and driver on the school bus. Would the uh, Officer Dodona come forward and also uh, the Chief and Deputy Chief? Deputy Chief Dominguez, we're on. Uh, I showed up to this accident probably 15 minutes uh, after Officer Dodona did, and I could attest to the fact that this was a horrific crash. The, uh, the driver that hit the school bus was lucky uh, to be alive. Um, the car rode all the way underneath the school bus. The, the rear of the school bus intruded um, all the way almost back to the headrest of the driver's seat uh, in the car. So the, uh, the driver escaped significant injury uh, by a miracle, um, but needed to be extricated. Uh, Officer Dodona did a terrific job uh, with the help of citizens nearby being able to get that um, woman out of the vehicle. And at that time, the car started catching fire underneath the school bus, which of course could have really been an issue. Um, Officer Dodona deployed his fire extinguisher uh, very quickly, extinguished those flames, and we you know, averted a much worse situation there. Um, so the uh, Police Commissioners Association of Connecticut um, chose Officer Dodona as one of four recipients in the state of Connecticut for 2023 to receive their meritorious service award for his actions. And I'd just like to read this uh, award quickly. 
for you. It says, Officer Joe Dodona of the Watertown Police Department, in recognition of your extraordinary action on March 1st of 2023, congratulations from the Police Commissioners Association of Connecticut. Before you leave, uh, officer, we have what is uh, state representative uh, Poletta, and uh, he has an award from the state for you. Should I start uh, telling the stories before or after Officer Dodona became a police officer? Because I've known him for that long. Um, but seriously, Joe, um, this is uh, such a great day, and we, um, so when the chief and when uh, Commissioner Antonetti reached out to me, um, I, I wasn't aware of the situation, and I was going to call you today, but then I said, you know, I'll make it like a little surprise tonight, um, and it's always an honor to give out an official citation from the General Assembly, something that uh, we don't do very often, but we do it for outstanding citizens and for people that have contributed to our town, uh, whether it be someone like you um, that undoubtedly um, could have saved lives in this situation, um, it could be a local business, it could be someone who has had profound impact on our community, but um, really as your friend, as somebody who is almost related to you, because I see your parents here, and yeah, yeah. We, we go back a long time, uh, it is honestly a, a privilege to present this to you. So I'll just read it very quickly. Um, it says, uh, the State of Connecticut General Assembly official citation. Uh, this was introduced by myself and State Senator Eric Berthel, um, who couldn't make it. We're actually also up the road at the Watertown Foundation dinner, so, um, but you know, this, to me, uh, was very important to attend. Uh, be it hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to Officer Joseph Dodona in recognition of your heroic actions taken. Um, and of course, by uh, uh, to the commitment to the Watertown community, keeping our residents safe and performing your duty with honor and service for so many years. Is it 22 years? <coughs> 26 years, oh geez, okay. <laughs> So it's a lot of years, but you've, you've performed your duty um, and, and um, you've been a valuable member of the police department. I can attest to that. So congratulations, Steve. Uh, at this time, could the members of the family come up uh, with uh, Representative uh, Poletta and get a picture in together, please? And the chief and deputy, if we can get everybody together. Tim's going to get everybody in the picture. Congratulations. Joe, good to see you. Go. Yep. Representative Poletta has to run over to the another meeting, Foundation, Watertown Foundation, and give another speech there, yes. Right. And, and if the family would like to leave, would also, you can leave, we're not obligated to stay, but if you'd like to stay, this is what happens at police commissions, okay? Thank you for coming this evening, everybody. I think it was a great night and a great award. Have a safe night.
Okay, we can move on to our uh, regular agenda. The, at this time, public participation. If anyone would like to speak, we have over here a microphone and a chair. Just come up and address the commission. Is there anyone that would like to speak tonight? Is there anyone that would like to speak tonight? Last chance. If I hear no one, then we can move on the agenda. The next matter on the agenda is the approval of the September 13th, 2023 regular meeting. There was a little problem with the recording. I would like to table that matter and take a motion to table, please. I'd like to make a motion to table um, item number four on the agenda, the approval of the September 13th, 2023 meeting minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Who's, who made that second? Carmine. 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 In the future, please uh, state your name. That's where the problem is with the minutes. Uh, the recording secretary had a little difficulty, and that's one of the reasons why we're tabling it, to try to address those. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none, we can move on to item number five, which is correspondence. And the first one is the LTA training requirements. I believe you all got that in the mail. Email. Email. Any comments? Chief, do you have some comments on that uh, training program? Uh, unless any of the commissioners have any questions, uh, both the deputy chief and I are attending as your designees. Um, I would certainly always encourage any members of the commission to attend if you're ever able. They did mention that uh, they may have courses again in the future, possibly even virtually, uh, which, which may make it easier for some people's schedule to attend. Um, but uh, again, this is a new uh, public act that did get signed into uh, into law that LTAs have to, uh, LTAs or their designees have to go through this course to function as the legal traffic authority. I believe there's going to be at the end of the year, in December, there is going to be a opportunity to Zoom and attend the meeting. Am I correct on that, Chief? They are speaking about trying to do an online uh, session in December, but they haven't actually release date those yet. dates yet. Right. So uh, it's not necessary to, to attend. Uh, we have, uh, as the chief, uh, our designee, but we also can uh, zoom on uh, the meeting and attend in December once they set the date. Okay. The other thing that you had an opportunity to read through a rather lengthy speed hump policy in Wilton, <coughs> Connecticut. And uh, I've been talking with the chief that it might be a good policy for us to adopt. Then we will have on record uh, the way to address any uh, people coming in who would want to speed bump or hump uh, in their neighborhood. There is a process, very lengthy, but I think thorough way to deal with this particular issue. One of the things we always get concerned over, we put one hump or bump uh, in there, another neighborhood would want it. So if there is a policy and everybody would have to apply to that particular policy and adhere to it, I think we would be protecting the commission and also the town and public works because there's a lot more involved than just putting a bump or a hump out there. Some comment from members of the commission. Mr. Chairman, through you. Yes. Um, before we uh, consider any type of policy, I know there is some liability with installing speed bumps, speed humps. Um, I would suggest to you that uh, we run it by council first. Um, before we take any action on a policy involving speed humps or speed bumps? I think you got a good point there, Commissioner, and uh, 
what I would urge all members to read thoroughly that particular uh, Wilton uh, policy. And I think uh, once we read through it, and once the council reads through it, I think they would approve it. And I, is Jerry here tonight? Yes, there he has. I knew you were coming tonight. And uh, Jerry would be more than happy to review it because it would fall upon the shoulders of Public Works. Jerry, you have some comments? And that's who the shoulders it falls on. Yeah, so I don't know how much time I have up here today. I could filibuster it and talk the whole night. <laughs> um, and uh, Jerry Lukowski, uh, Director of uh, Public Works, uh, 11 months uh, on the job. So I just don't know if you want the short version, medium version, or long version. Short. Okay, so um, we basically have 140 miles of road in the town. Um, and uh, just uh, quickly on the pavement side, there's uh, the road study has us uh, at $45 million to fix the roads. Um, we got 6.5 million, 5 million in town bonding and 1.5 million in ARPA funding. Um, for the bond, we just received 2.5. We received half of it uh, right now. You can see the work that's going on in the town. So on the speed bumps, speed humps, speed tables, there's a lot of different versions uh, of them. And we also, we did have one installed in the town and it didn't last too long. And I like Bob, to, because the one thing that I'm sure on is history uh, with the town. And Bob, if you just want to talk where the speed uh, bump was at and what happened to it. Uh, Bob Grand Prix, uh, Highway Superintendent. We initially had a, a speed bump installed near the intersection of uh, Sunnyside, I'm sorry, uh, Sylvan Lake and Falls Avenue, right after the two bridges were completed by Dayton Construction. Um, there was a lot of complaints about uh, people losing their mufflers. Um, and we lost uh, a snowplow because of the speed bump. Uh, it's nearly impossible to make a speed bump snowplow friendly. Um, and the speed bump actually ended up getting tore up by the snowplows trying to go over um, the speed bump. Because uh, once you lose the speed bump in the snow, you can't barely even see curbs. Um, and to find the speed bump is nearly impossible. So uh, the speed bump takes the beating, uh, and after one winter it got tore up so bad you couldn't drive over it no more and had to be removed. So they're a maintenance nightmare, and that's not even including uh, the painting, the, the pavement marking, the signage that's got to be installed. Um, and as you guys know, uh, it takes a lot for us to just keep up with crosswalk painting and the street signs that we already do have. So. I think it's, uh, we're opening ourselves up to more liability and uh, property damage. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other comments? Yeah, so that was, uh, and I'm concerned is where do you stop um, in the town? Is it a couple? Is it a couple dozen? Is there a hundred of them throughout the town? And most of the towns that you'll see that install them, they don't last for too long. Um, I'm a yes guy and a maybe guy. I don't like saying no. I want to make the fixes to the infrastructure, but we are so far behind, and it's basically in the 1980s we had 32 full-timers, and right now we have 20 in highways, so we lost 12. And during that time, we gained 30 additional miles of road. And where would the funding uh, come from? Would I have to take it out of the pavement program and do less miles of road? And I'm very proud of what we're doing out there, Wilson Street Bridge, Guernsey Town Road, uh, Mill and Pave, Chipstone, and more, you know, uh, happy about the shim and skim that we have going on with the uh, town uh, highway department. Um, and you could see it on the western part of the town. Uh, we're fixing up Middlebury Road right now. And uh, 
like I said, I could really go on for hours on any topic. And basically, I will uh, leave it, you know, at that unless you have any additional quest questions. I would love to read the uh, Wilton, uh, what they're doing. Um, and from what I, I've seen it, it's really not on long, lengthy roads. It's more on shortcuts to slow the traffic down when someone's cutting between two different roads. And uh, it's really, uh, I would also invite you to come out in the winter and drive on a snowplow truck to see what they have to deal with. And uh, those obstacles or objects in the road, you really can't see them because the road gets covered over with, with snow. And what the driver has to feel as they're going through our 140 miles with our 19 snow plow routes that we have. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that unless you have any additional questions. Are there any other questions for the uh, commissioner? I just have a, a general comment, and perhaps um, the, the superintendent or chief can comment on this, is the, or our public works director. Uh, for motorcycles, I drove motorcycles for many years. Um, I happened to hit a speed bump that I didn't see uh, driving out in New York in, in, on a back road in the state of New York, and it almost threw me th from, the, uh, from the motorcycle. There was no warning, no, you know, the, no signage and whatnot. Uh, it was actually a temporary speed bump they were doing construction on the road. Um, so there's some, there's some danger for motorcyclists when it comes to speed bumps, speed humps, speed tables, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and as a motorcyclist myself, I, I would just, if we do consider putting them somewhere, ideally it would be really on a very short stretch of road where, um, you know, vehicles or motorcycles are not really uh, coming up to speed very quickly. So just, just something to keep in mind. I don't know if the, um, our director of public works or the superintendent or chief or deputy chief have, have anything to say about the matter of motorcycles and speed bumps or speed humps. If there's any research behind it or data that you know of that it makes the road more dangerous for motorcycles. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments from the commissioners? I just have a question. I have a question. You said there's uh, forty-five million dollars worth of repairs to be done? Yes. Pending? Yes. And that was done by Beta. Uh, it's a professional consultant uh, that looked at our road system. Uh, currently, our rating is a 61. It's an F. Uh, the state average is a 72. Uh, my goal is to get it to a 72. Um, and fortunately, uh, this past year, the town voted on a $5 million bond uh, to do the work that you currently see uh, out on the road network. Um, and we always go after grants. Um, and that's Guernsey Town Road. It's uh, 3.6 million, 100% uh, from the state. How Most much of that 40? Not to interrupt you. How much of that 45 would you say is you have to? It should be done right away. Um, for me, as a, as a director of public yeah. works, it would be all of it. No, no, no. I'm no. I'm a realist, and um, currently with the five million, we're making pretty good headway on uh, on it. Um, and we do receive claims uh, probably on a weekly basis with a blown out tire on a pothole uh, or with an antenna ripping off of an RV trailer. So we're also going to be receiving additional claims with those mufflers that get ripped off from the bottom of the cars. Yeah. So for the $45 million, it would be, uh, um, I, I would, the plan has to be over a five to ten year period. Um, we do have to have a, a small appetite because we understand with the residents and taxpayers of the town, we can't get it all at once. Um, in the 1980s, highways, um, Bob's department was 6% of the budget. Uh, right now, uh, Bob's department is 3% of the budget. So this didn't happen overnight. It happened over the past 10, 20, 30 years where basically we let the roads go. Um, and we're trying some cost-efficient me measures like chipstone that you'll see across the town, uh, crack ceiling, and then mill and pave. 
but unfortunately, a lot of our road network has to be full depth reconstruction because the roads have failed. Right. Uh, last question, real quick, Wilson, you guys are fixing that bridge. Yes. Since July, I was just wondering, what's that projected date event? There's a couple of uh, key things. Uh, the biggest thing we're worried about is a 36-inch water main that fed all of Watertown and part of Waterbury. Um, the second thing is there's a gas main that we have to attach back to the side of the bridge. Right now, the other side of the bridge is okay with your domestic hot water, but for the heating season, we need to get the, the gas main on the side of the bridge. Uh, that's going to be done on the 1st of November. And then the pavement, which is what your the question is really about, is going to be at the end of November, beginning of December, before the plants are shut down for pavement. Okay. I just had some people inquiring. So I, 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 are we safe to say beginning of the new year? Uh, definitely. Okay. That's it fine. has to. Yes. Okay. Because otherwise we won't be able to. I appreciate to the work you guys do. I yep. know it's very difficult with the limited mm -hmm. resources and personnel, so I appreciate yep. it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from commission or police uh, chief yeah, through or the deputy chair. chief? Uh, first off, on behalf of the police department, uh, just want to thank you guys for the outstanding work you're doing in Watertown right now. It is absolutely amazing what you're accomplishing with the resources you have. Um, secondly, I was wondering if you could just speak real quick on what it would ever take to install a speed bump, just so that the legal traffic authority has an idea of cost material the time you know time that it would take the man hours etc what's involved in the actual installation so just a, a rough estimate it would be about ten thousand uh, dollars per and we would not want to do speed bumps we would want to do speed humps which are longer they're 14 feet uh, but you have to do full depth reconstruction um, it is better uh, for the snow plow truck um, but it's also all the signage um, because you would have the initial sign that would say speed bump table ahead. You would have another sign that would say the same thing. And then you would have the sign that would say speed bump. And it would be in both directions. So it would be six signs plus the, the amount of material that would have to be to, for con constructing it. And plus all the paintings and markings that are going to wear off uh, from the amount of traffic in the uh, snow plow trucks that are scraping off the snow and ice uh, during the uh, winter. And that is just for one. I currently don't have it in the budget for highways. Uh, we barely get by uh, on the operating budget. And what we're also trying to do is get away from special projects and stick more with maintenance. Uh, of the uh, per, for me, you know, as a director, and for Bob, it's the drainage systems of the highway. The 45 million doesn't include really drainage. We have a lot of subdivisions in the town that have no drainage uh, on it, um, especially up to the north, and even in Oakville. Um, so it's just like we're, one for me is where would the funding uh, come from, and then, you know, w we would be stopping other projects in the town uh, to put the speed humps uh, out in the uh, network of the streets. And once you put in a few, I just have a feeling that we're gonna have dozens, if not a hundred uh, speed humps uh, throughout the town. And I appreciate, you're right, and you gotta look at the perspective on, the, on our 140 miles of a motorcycle, that, that's a great example. Um, when, when you come across that. Um, but you don't see many in the state, and when they're put in, I think you see them come out, not all of them, uh, but from the towns that I've been through uh, throughout the state. I, I, I just want to respond to that. And Chief, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I just want to alleviate some of your concern when it comes to the speed humps or bumps. It's going to be an extreme circumstance that we authorize a speed bump. I don't, I don't think, are we thinking about installing them currently? Well, that would definitely be up to your, your body uh, as the legal traffic authority, but uh, I'm in ag agreement with uh, Commissioner Gennetti that um, the type of road where a speed hump or bump 
is actually appropriate is extremely limited. Generally, a very low speed road, um, maybe a congested area uh, where you're just trying to limit the traffic. It's usually a very small cut through road from one main artery to another. Uh, where right. you see these installed. So I think it's just something we're exploring. I don't want, I, 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 I see your concerns. I want you to know that we acknowledge your concerns and it would only be under a drastic circumstance that we would consider it. Okay. Is there any other comments from the commission? Any other comments from the chief or deputy chief? A council, yes. Counselor? State your name, please. Speaking as a member of the council, this issue, this suggestion has been brought up many times before. I do not believe it's the council's sanction. I'd have to concur with Mr. Lukowski, Mr. Janetti. Reason being, there's the risk factor involved. <clears throat> I worked with Roger back previously when the speed bump was placed on Sylvan Lake Road by Franklin Avenue vehicles not obeying the signage going airborne children waiting for a school bus were almost struck and the car ended up on a lawn uh, I don't think it's a good idea in fact in the paper today in Republican American there was an ordinance enacted in Litchfield that explains it well not much traffic pedestrian traffic in the summertime limited roadway and it's only temporary as of November 1st, it's going to be removed. You can't put it where it's there to monitor speed or control speed. I think the risk factor would outweigh the advantage of having one to control speed. Thank you, Representative Sina. Uh, as you can see, generally, there, there's a very strong feeling not to either go into bumps or humps among the commissioners, I also feel there's a lot of danger with it. I also agree with the director of public works. We go with one, there will be another and another, probably too many to count. It, it is a, a dangerous situation. One of, one of the things I liked, and I hope again, all the members of the commission read the Wilton proposal. And it, the thing that I like most is that public has to go out and petition. The public has to then have a hearing. The more effort that they have to put in, not just come to a commission and say, oh, it's so dangerous, they're speeding. They have to do work to convince the commission. And if the council approves the Wilton idea, then we can move forward. Right now, the issue is stagnant. We are moving, not going to move on it immediately. There will be a thorough investigation, and more than likely, the respect for not only the persons who bring in their idea for a speed bump or hump, and this is the forum where it should be done, but it's not going to be just on a simple decision by the commission. It means that they will have to do a lot of work to convince the commission that there is a need, an extreme need for safety, and that is the primary objective that we're looking at. Right now, I think there are other ways to address safety on our highways. Right now, I say it's in limbo, that it's not gonna go forward. So that's some rest for Bob when he starts plowing. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions and comments on speed bumps? Then we can move ahead on the next matter just, on the agenda. Just why you have me up here. I sure. Think, uh, one of the largest safety issues uh, that's been addressed over the years is Main Street. Um, today, the RFQ request for qualifications has been uh, advertised uh, for, a, for us to hire a designer to address the safety concerns on Main Street. Um, and we're lining up federal and state uh, funding uh, for that, uh, which is basically uh, through Watertown and through Oakville. Um, I know we have a, a board uh, for the selection. There's three of us in, currently in the room right now that are going to be on that selection for the consultant uh, to help uh, the safety measures within Main Street 
uh, within Watertown in, in Oakville. I just wanted to uh, let the board uh, know that. And I do appreciate uh, coming up here uh, uh, to the police commission. And uh, I know the highway department and the police department work well. Um, basically, we have the police department tapped out with uh, officers on all the construction projects uh, throughout the, uh, the town. And it's great. Uh, the chief and deputy chief asked me and the lieutenant, what's your priorities? And we give the priorities, and, and that's how we staff uh, all those projects to keep them safe uh, throughout the, uh, the town. Thank you for coming tonight, Commissioner, and we do appreciate all the work that both you and Bob are doing out there. It's been a long time and a long time needed on these roads, but it's finally moving forward. I'm glad to hear that the implementation of the RSA study as far as yep. beacons to be installed in the downtown area, sidewalks, it is great because I think you guys are doing a fine and excellent job out there. So keep up the effort. Winter is going to be closing in. I realize that there's going to be some limitation. Maybe we'll be fortunate as last winter, maybe no snow. That would be great. But we thank don't you. We think so. Not with the <laughs> amount of rain that we're having. Rain we'll have. But thank you for coming tonight. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have a, a new problem that uh, I think has to be addressed on uh, Commercial Street and New Wood Road. You realize there's a big development coming over on Bunker Hill, both in housing, apartments, and then warehouses. There's going to be three or four new warehouses with tractor tra trailer trucks going out on to 63 using New Wood Road. That's before planning and zoning. You know that I also serve on planning and zoning. And boy, is that a big, big project. We have a problem right now on Commercial Street. And the one that we're concerned with is the amount of tractor trailers that may be there unloaded uh, vacant uh, other than tractor trailers, empty uh, car haulers, and that creates a problem. I had mentioned this to the chief a while back that I thought it was very unsafe because if they block, if you're going down that street, commercial street, you don't know what may come out because they are blocking vehicles that are coming out from various parking places that are there. You also have exits for places like uh, McDonald's. You have an exit for banks, and ex also businesses are there. So now the question, Chief, and I know you've thought about it, is signage on that area. What are your thoughts on Commercial Street? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you know, the police department has been receiving a steady amount of complaints regarding tractor trailers, primarily just the trailer units being parked on Commercial Street along the curb line, uh, sometimes for an extended period of time. And when I say extended period of time, it can be weeks at a time before uh, the owner returns and picks up that trailer again and departs with it, uh, often just to bring it back again uh, within days and leave the trailer there again. So we, we have some apparently some truck drivers in the area utilizing Commercial Street as a place to park their a large trailer that would be used in a tractor trailer unit. There's currently no parking restrictions on Commercial Street. Um, it is a very wide road that can certainly accommodate parking on both sides of the road. And uh, the, the parking on that road is really vital for the businesses that line it, including all the uh, uh, car dealerships up there that, you know, you know, during the winter, especially when they got to clear their lots, uh, they move a lot of their cars out on a commercial street, clear their lots of snow, et cetera, and, and, and then bring them back in. Uh, the problem is the leaving trailers parked on that road uh, around the clock. 
um, and I would, you know, offer this topic to the commission to discuss possibly enacting a uh, restriction of either no overnight parking uh, year round or no tractor trailer parking, um, something along that line. That would give the police department the authority to ticket and tow uh, if if they're in violation, because oftentimes these trailers. Uh, having a portion plate on them that come back to a different state and you know we have no local ties to even try to call the owner to come down and pick up the the trailer so the, we have limited enforcement capability right now any comments from members of the commission I have a question for the chief chair chief how many trucks usually park out there so I, I went by yesterday and there were three three trailers. Two of them were car carrying trailers that would have like a, th like a fifth wheel type of a trailer uh, that probably carry about five cars on them. And the other was a full size tractor trailer flatbed. Why um, do they pick Commercial Street? I think because it's kind of out of the way. It's very wide. Um, it's a commercial area, so it doesn't really make it look out of place. And, um, and generally speaking, nobody bothers them when they do it. So um, it and, makes it and, appealing. And who's complaining? Residents and business uh, business owners there who are having trouble pulling out of their lots and being uh, able to see around the trailers. And then at nighttime, you know, to have a flatbed trailer just parked on the side of a wide road like that can kind of be a hazard. Okay. In the Thank dark. You. Yep. Mr. Chair, through you. Yes, Commissioner. Chief, what's your preference? Uh, with some type of parking restriction there because I know that there are some factories up there that might run second shift. I don't know if there's any third shifts uh, up there, but I do see a lot of workers, employees parking on that road, which doesn't present the issue that a tractor trailer would or a trailer would. Uh, would it be f to restrict commercial parking or the parking of commercial vehicles? Um... Either setting a time limit uh, for no overnight parking uh, is one option, and the other is simply to ban any uh, parking of you know tractor trailers, but actually posting signs that say no no tractor trailer parking. Um, I think I would more be in favor of is saying no parking between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m., um, something along that line. And that would give us the ability in our midnight shift then to go and get those vehicles out of there. Um, it would probably be a, a better method than just banning the parking of commercial vehicles, but certainly up for discussion. I, I, Mr. Chair, through you, just if I can respond to the chief, I, I, I like that um, better because there are, I'm sure there's some circumstances with there being commercial business activity up there where a tractor trailer would have to temporarily park there, whether they're making a, a delivery or not, but certainly not uh, circumstances where it should be left, the trailer or the tractor and trailer should be left overnight. So I, I agree with you on, on that, the overnight aspect of the restriction. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. Through, through the chair, uh, we, we do have a restriction during the winter time uh, with the parking ban, um, which gives us some authority during the winter time to get the vehicles out of there. So we are able to enforce throughout the winter, but come April 1st, that ban expires from April 1st to November 1st. Uh, you know, there's no restriction whatsoever. So if we were to put, basically take the winter parking ban and make it year round on Commercial Street would probably be the best bet. Any other questions from the commissioners? Chief, do you think uh, you could, at our next meeting, uh, present a sign that you would find acceptable for being posted on that uh, street? I certainly could, yes. Pardon me? Yes, I could certainly do that. Very good. Thank you. The uh, next uh, item on our agenda is uh, old business. Uh, we are dealing with the problem on Wolf Hill Road and Route 6 or Woodbury Road. Uh, there is more construction that is starting on Wolf Hill Road, new buildings, so there will be more cars 
going in and out of Wolf Hill Road. And uh, have you gotten any word from DOT, Chief? Yes, sir. On September 15th, only a few days after our last meeting, I did receive correspondence from the Department of Transportation, which I'll read into the minutes. Dear Chief Berniger, the Department of Transportation's Division of Traffic Engineering has received your email regarding the installation of an intersection warning sign on U.S. Route 6, Woodbury Road, westbound towards Wolf Hill Road in the town of Watertown. The department will review conditions and advise you as to the outcome of the investigation. In response to your further recommendation for flashing beacons to be displayed on the proposed sign, the Connecticut Department of Transportation recommends the, investi uh, the investigation be completed first. If the area warrants a sign installation in accordance with the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, then the Connecticut Department of Transportation will install the signs. The sign will be visible to motorists and with retro reflectivity compliant with the manual and uniform traffic control devices. If the town desires flashing lights on the sign, the lights may be installed and will be owned and maintained by the town of Watertown. The town must obtain an encroachment permit from the department's District 4 maintenance office to perform any of this work within the state's right of way, um, which means we would also be responsible for the electrical bill as well should those flashing beacons be installed. I have not yet been informed that they have completed their investigation, so this was our last correspondence. But what's the date on that correspondence? Uh, Friday, September 15th. Thank you. Any comments from members of the commission? So when and where did we go from here? I realize there's a lot of red you know, paperwork to be done. So we are just waiting at this point to hear back again from the Department of Transportation as to when they complete that investigation and whether or not a uh, sign is warranted. So the ball is in their court. Uh, do you think they're fully aware of the danger on that particular road? I believe my email was clear to them, yes. Okay. So we'll wait. Okay. And on the next uh, item on the agenda, we are chairman's report. We are going to have community forums on crime according to, we have to, according to Public Act 23-146, requiring uh, that uh, we hold these public forums, uh, I believe, is it four times a year, Chief? Yes, sir. Right. And this is, needs a motion to have these particular forums. The next forum would be held in December. First forum. Do I have a motion to accept the directive from the council? So about, moved, Mr. Chairman. You ex Commissioner Gennetti, you made a motion. Commissioner Gennetti. I make a motion to approve a community forum on crime according to Public Act 23-146 for the December Police Commission meeting. Thank you very much. All those in favor say aye. Second. All those aye. opposed? Hearing none, motion is carried. Mr. Chairman, I, yes. think, I don't think we took a second on that. Second, second, Commissioner Verno. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Okay, I'm trying to move it along here. Thank you. Um, police Chief's monthly report. Chief, you have your monthly report. Do you want to read that for the uh, commission? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hopefully you all received that uh, via email. I'll read that into the minutes. Uh, a new entry officer has been hired and has started the police academy this past Friday, uh, October 6th, which brings our sworn force to 41 officers. For our 42nd sworn position, a certified lateral hire has been given a conditional offer and a background investigation is underway. We hope to have that officer on board soon. Officer Justin Faila. Thank you. Faila. I mess that up every time. I'm sorry, Officer Faila. Uh, he graduated from the he's graduating from the police academy tomorrow. 
Uh, Officer Fayula will begin his field training, which should last about 12 to 15 weeks. And we wish him the best and a warm welcome to the town of Watertown. On October 26th at 2 p.m. at police headquarters, Sergeant Chris Paquin will be promoted to the rank of lieutenant. Lieutenant Paquin will be assigned to the position of patrol commander, while the current patrol commander, Lieutenant Tim Gavallis, will be transferred to the position of support services. The Watertown Police Department has two new bicycle patrol officers, Officer Matt Ciccarello and Officer Michael Wolfson, who recently completed uh, the police bicycle training. We hope to utilize our bicycle patrol on a more consistent basis next year. It's really great to have the bikes out, especially on Main Street uh, in the you know, heavy pedestrian areas and stopping into the businesses. It's uh, um, you know, much more community oriented uh, than, than having officers in a cruiser. The department's police motorcycle is being outfitted with a mobile data terminal and an e-ticketing printer, which will allow the motorcycle now to be better used for traffic enforcement. And we hope to uh, get that motorcycle out a little more next year and uh, utilize it to do speed enforcement on, on roadways where motorcycles can often be a lot more maneuverable and um, stealthier than trying to fit a police car on the side of the road to run radar. Uh, lastly, the Watertown Police Department has received grant awards through the Department of Transportation to participate in the upcoming Distracted Driving and Driving Under the Influence Enforcement Campaigns. We will be hiring officers on grant overtime specifically to enforce distracted driving and DUI laws, and that'll take place uh, throughout the months of November and December. That concludes my report. Unless there's any questions, I can answer. Thank you, Chief. Any questions? I have one question through the chair. Chief, um, so you got 41 and then 42 is going to be a lateral? Yes, sir. What does that bring you to and how many do you need to get the full staffing? So 42 is what our budget authorizes us at. That would be full staffing. Let's try to get it to 45. I'm hoping for 46. That's my goal. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Whatever you need, let us know. Motion is in order to adjourn. Do I have that motion? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, abstentions, hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. It is five of eight. Pretty good. Oh.